teach the laws that he gave to the children of Israel diligently unto your children. Read. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So when you're just sitting down in your living room, you're supposed to be talking to your children about God, about his commandments and his judgments for breaking them. Let me give you a shot on that. You got it? Yeah, yeah, take your time. Take your time. Get that light out. So when you sit in the house, you're supposed to be teaching. You got kids, Will? Because you married. How many kids you got? You got two daughters. So guess what? This stops baby mamas, Will. When your little girl says, you know what? Daddy showed me in the Bible that God was going to be mad at me if I have sex with a boy before I get married. Guess what your daughters grow up not to do? Not to sleep with no Negro that come and mack at them and tell them some sweet words and make them feel good. You understand? Your little girl is less prone to give up her body, Will, because you as the father are the first man that she learns to be submissive to so that she then learns later to be submissive to her own husband. That's right. That's on you, Will. Right. That's the law that we're supposed to be taught, but we're supposed to teach it diligent when we sit in the house. Read. And when thou walkest by the way, when you at the park, Will, you're supposed to be pointing stuff out and saying, baby, guess what? What is that right there? What scripture is that? You remember the scripture daddy taught you about that? So when you walking by the way, if you're in the mall, you're supposed to be pointing things out. Baby, what law is that? What law is that? What law is that? You're supposed to teach them constantly. Right. Read. And when thou liest down. So at night, you're, supposed to, you're not supposed to be reading Five Little Monkeys. If you got little kids, you know, you know that story. You're not supposed to be reading Five Little Monkeys and all of these other bedtime stories that they gave them. No, teach them the stories about Jesus Christ and how he came to save his people, That's right. the Israelites only. Right. Teach them about the story of Jonah when he was hard-headed and turned away from the will of God that God punished him. Teach them about the sisters and the foremothers in the Bible who under their men guided Israel as mothers of Israel. And let me say not guided because they were never over it, but they were examples to the other young women right. so that all the young women behind them knew how they were supposed to conduct themselves with their men. That's, right. That's what you teach them at bedtime. Read. And when thy, thou risest up and when thy bind them for a sign uh -huh. upon thine hand uh -huh. and they shall be as Frontlets uh -huh. between their thine eyes. So frontlets between their eyes, meaning these laws will be right here in their mind. Because if you teach them this, Will, then this is the way that they'll go. Proverbs 20 and 6. Proverbs 20 and 6, 22 and 6. Is that it? Proverbs 22, 6. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 22, 6, 22, 16. Yeah, read that. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Read. Train up a child in the way he should go. Uh -huh. And when he is old, uh -huh. he will not depart from it. So we teach them this now when they little, so that when they older will, they can make sound decisions and won't depart from the word of God. That's right. Do you understand? This is the truth about the Bible, Will. And you don't understand it because they never taught you to do the commandments. But like the Bible said... If you do the commandments, you'll have a good understanding of this book. That's right. And then you can raise your daughters to be productive women. You understand? They can be valuable to the nation of Israel. They'll be valuable to God. They're already valuable to him, but he's saying, now you must do my commandments so that I deal with you in the way that I deal with my children. Right. You understand? Not just the judgments, but the blessings that will come with being a child of God. This is not a book for everybody, Will. But you were taught that though, right? Yeah. yeah. Name a scripture out of the Bible that you know, Will. I know, I know you know one. It, it's one main one that we all know, Will. If I call it right now, you could probably quote the whole thing. That shall not kill. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. You know John 3.16? You don't. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. So let me show you. Based on what you know, sis, did you have any questions at all? Okay, so based on what you know, thou shalt not kill, right? I mean, that Exodus chapter 20, verse number 15, I think. Thou shalt not kill. We're going to show you where to find it. It's the book of Exodus chapter 20, and I believe verse number 15. No, 13. Read that. Hey, sis, sis, before you, how long have you known you were Israel? Uh, three years. Three years, Okay. Let me ask you a question. Now, knowing that you are Israel, we have things that we're supposed to do as Israelites, right? What is that that we're supposed to do? Uh, keep the Sabbath. 
Aham. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So how do we keep it holy, sis? What are the ways to keep the Sabbath day holy? Uh, you should not work. You shouldn't work. Good. You should not buy or sell. No buying and selling. Good. Uh, of course, uh, God, worshiping with your family. We're supposed home. to? No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't say that. Me, yeah, I, I got you. I got you. So, but you want good track. No buying and selling. We no working, no cooking. No cooking yeah. Meaning we can eat food. It don't mean not to eat. It just means don't turn it on a crock pot Friday night and let it sit in the crock pot. Right. All you're doing is slow cooking it, so it's still cooking. So no cooking from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. I've been doing that, but like you said, I keep you know slow cooker, little bitty things like that. Right, but it's called a slow right. cooker, yeah. right? So on warm, it's still cooking it just at a very slow pace. Okay, give me Leviticus 23 and three. All right. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 3. Six days shall be shall work be done. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Uh -huh. And holy convocation. A what? And holy convocation. What is a holy convocation, sis? Um, it has like a, a gathering. Like a gathering, right. So it means more than being at home with your own family on the sofa chilling. You, you must congregate with like-minded people, okay? When you go into the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8, it explains to you what they did. That whole congregation stood out there from the time the sun came up to the time it went down with them just reading the Bible like we're doing on this podium right now. So they kept the Sabbath holy and they did no complaining of it, but it was the whole congregation. So it must be... Until you're able to do that? Uh, when you say until you're able to do that, meaning... Uh-huh. Uh, you know what I mean. Right. Well, we got we got a whole body, sis. Right. We, we got a big old body. So you're able, where do you stay? You stay on this end of town? Yeah, I'm way north. So okay, where, where's way north? The colony? This is the colony? Oh, right. He stayed probably five minutes from you. Right. So we, we drive down, sis. Right. Remember, when people had to go to the temple, they were coming from Galilee on foot and on mules. So God is, God is, now if you had two hours to drive, you know, it's understandable, but we have people with congregations that are two hours away that still drive to their congregation because they do what? They fear the most high God. Hey. So they go to congregate. So it has to be that much fear. I understand, bro. I understand. You got all the information on the back of that flyer, okay? All the information is on the back of it. Yeah. So, sis. So, when your heart is towards God, none of that is going to be grievous to you. Not one bit of it. Uh, 1 John 5 and 3. None of the commandments. So, if, if on your job, how far do you live from your job? You don't work. Okay, beautiful. Uh, you know, it's a lot of sisters in our body. Like I said, I got a lot. I'm trying to, you know. You're trying to get it. To your husband, is, is is he on board or? Uh, he, he, he sees me. You know? He sees you. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. Now, drop that. Drop that. Give me Matthew, uh, give me, give me Matthew 5 and 16. Matthew 5 and 16. I got you. We got. We only got a couple of more minutes. Just a couple of minutes, sis. Matthew five sixteen. Matthew chapter five and verse sixteen. The people which sat in darkness. Is that two? Is that sixteen? Yeah, this is two. Sixteen. Sixteen. Five and sixteen. <laughs> you good? Matthew chapter five verse sixteen. Uh -huh. Let your light shine. So shine before men. Before men. So that means. For other people, it says, let your light shine in front of other people, your husband, your children, and you have children at home. In front of them, it's telling you, Rika, to let your light shine right now. Read. Before men, uh -huh. that they may see your good works uh -huh. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So that means, now give me First Peter chapter 3. So that means that you let people see, in your household, see you doing it first. Because then God gets the glory, and then the Most High decides if He's going to put the Spirit on them That's to follow. Why I haven't, uh, First Peter three one. Uh huh. I end up being a preacher for them, you know. So I end up being right, right. To these false people, so right, right, right. I never have a urge to go and congregate because I'm too busy preaching. 
but 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 sis, now, now let me ask. Yeah, in the three years though, at what point did God ever make the women the messenger? No, no you okay? Yeah, right, right, right. So, and it's it's perfectly fine to preach, but if you feel that you preaching them, teaching them the word instead of going to congregate is more important, then you falling way off. Because the Most High God said that he put men over the congregation, and if he has a congregation close enough to you, then what are you supposed to be doing? You're supposed to go congregate under those men, right. and then you let those people see your light shine, and then possibly the Most High causes them to follow you into the congregation. That's right. So that's why I said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the, the, your Father which is in heaven. So they won't be looking at Rika like, oh, she's so deep, she's a good teacher. No, they'll be saying, God's order said that I'm supposed to go and learn under a man. Right. So all praises to the Most High that he gave you a spirit to understand. But now it's time for you to move forward to the next thing and let that peace go. Read this one thing. Yes, sir. Two minutes. First Peter 3, verse 1. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye wives, so Rika, Rika. be in subjection to your own husband. So you do a good thing to be in subjection to your husband, okay? Read that. Read. That if any obey not the word. So if your husband does not obey the word of God, if he's not moving the same way that you're moving or at the same pace, let's see what happens. Read. They also may without the word uh -huh. be won by the conversation of the wives. So your husband, if you were going and congregate. If you're keeping a skirt and a dress on with fringes at the bottom and doing the things that you're commanded to do, then it's possible that the Most High uses your spirit to wake your husband up in the way that he's supposed to, That's right. to That's go right. and congregate That's and leave your right. house. Do you understand? Bring but one of the things that you know about the skirts and the dresses, right? Deuteronomy 22 and 5. So sis, all of those are small things that you're supposed to be doing to let your light shine. Right. But the more that you go into your mind and say, okay, I believe in God, I, I, I got to be able to build this up. Now you're going too far into your own thing and not in the spirit of the most high. Right. That's a dangerous thing. You understand? So you got all the information, sis. We got to close out, okay? But you got all the information. I encourage you to come and keep the Sabbath with us yeah. because it's going to take you maybe 40 minutes to drive down there with us. Right. Let your husband know you're going to congregate. Let him see that you're doing it. It's not an all-day thing. We got we got several classes. We got a, a class that starts at about 11 in the morning. We got another one that's at like 2 or 3 o'clock. And then we've got the main one from New York that starts at about 4 o'clock. All right? So you, you're welcome to come. Uh, you may want to come to the 11 o'clock one first. All right? And then work your way into coming into the later one because the later one lasts longer. Okay? All right. But remember your skirts and your dresses, sis. All praises. Yeah, all praises. Yeah. So, so sis, That's funny. Yes, sir. do you know where that scripture is about about you putting on the apparel you're supposed to wear? No, you know? sir. No. Bring okay. Bring bring Read that. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two and verse five. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says, Rika, that you cannot wear what belongs to a man. Watch the second part. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So that means if you walked in the house and your husband had on one of your skirts or dresses, what, what, would that be weird or would that be okay? That's a, That's a problem. So what happened was in the 19, in the 1850s, women, not our women, because in the 1850s we were slaves. In 1850, the so-called white woman started fighting for her own personal rights in America. We were still slaves. So they fought for the right to be able to wear pants, which is where Amelia Bloomhart came from. Bloomer. They Bloomers. <laughs> So they began to wear them then, but it was only for them because y'all were still slaves. That's right. So they were not fighting for your rights to wear pants. Fast forward 100 years in the 1950s, when they began to send us off to the various wars, women had to work in the factories. In those factories, it was a, in, in America, it was illegal to wear dresses. I mean, pants. Okay. Look it up. It was illegal for a woman to wear pants but they allowed them to wear coveralls and pants in the factories because their skirts and dresses were getting snatched into the machines and some of them were dying. But as soon as they got off work, they had to put their skirts and dresses back on. 
they were not allowed to walk the streets. Right. So in the women's rights movement, which started in the 1960s, now you got the black man out of the house fighting in Vietnam, and they begin to give Section 8 and the various subsidies, and they told women we couldn't have a men, and then they tell the black woman, join with us. Fight for your own rights. Don't accept the drug addict man. Don't accept the man with no job, but they wouldn't give us jobs, sis. So those pants were done to trick you into believing that you could be the head of your house when the Bible never said that. So, sis, make sure you get skirts and dresses. Yes, sir. Okay, read that. Trousers, meaning pants. Uh -huh. Wear the trousers. Be the dominant partner in a relationship. Uh -huh. So that's trousers. Trousers mean that you are the dominant partner. When a, when a man is told by his friends, we know who wears the pants in that house, they normally commenting about the woman. But the woman is supposed to be under subjection to her own husband. So that means the skirt and the dress is spiritual because it shows you that you are under subjection to your husband. Right. Plus, he's the only one supposed to see your curves. That's right. That's you right. understand? All right, sis. All right. Now they will see the true men of God. Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.